maybe if you want to go ahead, Kim, and hopefully uh, Tiffany can can join us. If you want to start with just your own introduction, and then I already see there's at least one question for you to get going, and and hopefully Tiffany comes along soon. Don't forget to unmute. <laughs> Thanks, Trina. And hi, everyone. So happy to be here with you today. Um, as Trina said, my name is Kim Hobbs, and I'm a biologist currently working at Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Um, the reason she introduced me as uh, someone working in environmental biomonitoring is because that was my most current position. Um, I worked for a company called Oceans Limited in St. John's, and my job was to monitor the activities of industries in the offshore. So things like oil and gas industries. Basically, we were looking at what, if any, effects these industries had on aquatic organisms, um, mostly fish, but we did also look at um, aquatic invertebrates such as crabs and sea urchins, scallops. Um, but I've since changed um, my career path again, <laughs> and I'm now currently working at Fisheries and Oceans Canada in the Aquaculture Research Section. Oh, you're muted, Trina. <laughs> Goodness, I'll never get used to it. Um, thanks so much, Kim, uh, for introducing yourself there. And Tiffany, if you want to just introduce yourself as well as just letting the girls know um, they could pop questions into the Q&A and they can upvote questions as we go as well. Um, so they can pop back and forth between the two of you. Some questions might apply to both. Some questions might be specific. Um, and, and by all means, for the membership, uh, the girls, you can ask questions of myself as well if you're having trouble with Flipgrid uh, or anything like that. So with that, Tiffany. Yeah, thanks, Trina. I was having some difficulty logging on. It's like the story of my life since everything went virtual. Um, but yeah, uh, my name is Tiffany. I, um, I'm currently uh, doing a master's degree. Um, I did a biochemistry degree at Mon. Um, so I took a lot of science courses in high school. So if you have any questions about that, um, shoot them my way. Um, but I work with uh, Sequence Bio as a project coordinator, um, which basically at Sequence Bio, we're trying to discover more about the genetics of Newfoundland and Labradorians. And I get to work with the public directly. So I get to recruit people um, into our study and hopefully there'll be a, a lot of really great outcomes from that research. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I've done, I've done research like throughout my entire undergrad degree. So um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do and doing research. So helping my profs with their like studies and stuff um, really helped me get a good grasp on like where I wanted to go. Um, I'm from a small town called Fairyland. Um, so it was biomedical engineering. I, I, I'm not really sure I don't, that's not super related. I can type the answer in there as well after I do a little bit of research. Um, but yeah, from a small town in Fairyland. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be here. Perfect. Thanks so much. I'll read out questions as we go along um, just so that we can we can make sure it's all clear as, as the girls might not be reading the questions at the same time you are. Um, but We've got, uh, what do you monitor? I think you kind of, you, you uh, kind of answered that already. Did you want to add anything to that, Kim? Sure. Um, basically, we were doing uh, biochemical and also histopathological analysis on animals that were potentially exposed to toxins in the environment. Um, the type of tests that we do are applicable to any animal and actually some of them are also applicable to plants. So uh, even though most of our focus was on uh, the marine environment and in particular uh, looking at um, areas around the oil rigs out on the Grand Banks, 
the stuff that we did was applicable anywhere. Uh, we also did some work for mining industries. So we were looking at, you know, tailings in, in tailings ponds to see if they were having an effect on the animals present. Um, yeah, so it's basically the technique is applicable to, to nearly any organism really. Wonderful, thanks Kim. Got to remember to unmute myself every time. Um, let's see, and, and the girls are starting to upvote. Just going to remind them that they can do that. Um, so the first, the, the top question right now is, what courses did you take for your undergrads? Um, if you want to go first, Tiffany. Absolutely. Um, so during the first year, um, anyone who wants to do a science degree, everyone for their first year has to do a general science year. So um, I did introductory to biology um, and chemistry, bi biochemistry specifically isn't offered until the second year. So things like math, um, math 1090, there's like cert like everything that you have to do if you, um, Google the, the program that you wanted to do and then like type in MUN. Um, it actually gives you a list of like all the courses that are required. Um, but I did a lot of biochemistry and like food chemistry and metabolism and stuff like that. Now, if I can add to that just ever, ever so briefly, uh, as you're saying, you type in, type in what you're looking for in your um, unboxed manuals. If you go to the post-secondary section, uh, there was there was several underlined there for Memorial, for CNA, for Marine Institute. Um, so just click those links from your unboxed uh, bulletin, which is up on Flipgrid, uh, and that'll take you right to what what courses you tangibly need for those degrees. Um, but Kim, you're up. Uh, what courses did you take for your undergrad? Um, basically similar to Tiffany, although I did my undergrad many, many moons ago. Uh, actually, I started my undergrad in 1987. None of you were around then. <laughs> but uh, and I also went to um, I did my undergrad degree at St. Francis Xavier University. So, you know, the course requirements were a little bit different than at MUN. But basically, yeah, the first year was just um, basic first year science courses, biology, chemistry, physics. I also did some introductory psychology, uh, things like that. Then at the end of your first year, if you want to do a major, you declare your major at the end of your first year, and then you start to decide, okay, what are the core courses that I wanna focus on? Because um, as a biology major, obviously, I was going to be focusing more on biology courses and also a lot of chemistry courses because for a major, some, some chemistry courses are required such as organic chemistry, really, really scary subject, but really cool. Um, and you have you know certain electives that you can do as well. But most of my courses, because I had already uh, decided in my mind that I wanted to go on and do a graduate degree. So I, focused my core courses to to reflect the type of graduate degree that I wanted to do and that was fisheries based. Wonderful and two very good points there is if you're doing uh, your degree at a different university than Memorial, there's going to be different requirements, uh, both to initially get in the program and once you're in it to actually complete it. Um, but also over time, your the the requirements can change like literally year to year um so the year that you enter memorial and i'm saying this as it was the the case when i went to memorial um but but make sure that you're always checking up on things uh so when i when i attended memorial um the uh, requirements that i needed to complete my program was the the year that i joined Mun, um, but I could have taken any year after that. So the year later, they happened to change the, the program requirements. I could go with those program requirements if I wanted to, but had I joined the year later, I couldn't have gone back and done the, the requirements that were 
a year before me. Um, so while we're trying to give you all of this information, make sure that uh, you ultimately do the do the program that that is required of you at that time. And they're not going to change ever so drastically that these things won't apply. You'll always need to do biochemistry for a biochem degree, but I uh, just wanted to put that out there too. Uh, question for both role models. What are some of the reasons why you chose this program? And I think the second question, we can tie in there to what made you want to pursue these careers? So yeah, maybe we'll start with Kim this time. Reasons you chose this program and, and what made you want to pursue this career? Okay, so <clears throat> basically, um, I guess I've always wanted to be a biologist, even before I knew what that was. <laughs> um, I've always liked animals, nature, and I really wanted to understand what made things in nature work. So that's why I went towards biology. As far as my career, um, you know, growing up in Newfoundland, you're surrounded by the ocean. So it's got to have some kind of influence on you one way or the other. And I was really interested in fish biology because when I was doing my undergraduate degree, it was right around the time that the fisheries moratorium was beginning. I was graduating uh, from my undergraduate degree in 1991 and the moratorium came into effect at the end of that year. So I was really interested in uh, researching fish and ways of making the fishery more sustainable. Um, yeah, so that's how I got into fish biology. My story wasn't so <laughs> coherent. Um, so I was really interested. I, I chose to do a biochemistry degree because I knew I loved science. Science was something that I, I excelled in even, you know, from like 10th grade general science. Um, and uh, I was really passionate about it. Um, and biochemistry nutrition was something that <laughs> at the time it was, you know, and it still kind of is like nutrition and how important it is and like you're expanding your lifespan and, and things like that really sparked my interest. So my friends were also doing the program um, and they kind of pushed me along as well. But at the time when I signed up for it, I wasn't actually sure what I wanted to do. So the reason why I chose biochem was because it gave me a lot of flexibility. So people think that when you do a degree, that's gonna, that's it. Like when you go to Kona and you do like a technologist program, you're gonna be a technologist for, you know, probably whatever you went to school for. But with a degree program, it's a little bit different because it opens up more doors. So it's like, okay, you have a, um, a degree in biochemistry. Now what? What are you gonna? How are you gonna use that? So I was like, okay, uh, I, I guess I'll do. I want to focus on medical research. So that's how I ended up in my master's program. And again, now that I'm in my master's program, it's opened up more doors. So now I can like work with policymakers um, around um, certain medical policies. I can also work with doctors to help improve patient care. There's, it's really limitless to what you want to do and you can be as specific or as broad as you want. And uh, my specific job, actually, I um, sequence bio, once you start studying and you're like, science is your entire life, uh, Kim, you probably, you get this as well, um, but you become really passionate about local uh, programs or local companies that are doing exactly what you're interested in. So genetics and um, genomic medicine. So how your genetics um, affect like your health outcomes in the future um, is in my opinion, very interesting. So I like, I started like messaging them right away. Like as soon as they were like founded, I guess. And um uh, yeah, I like I fell into this because I was just persistent and I knew that this was what I was really interested in. And, and is this going to be my career for the rest of my life? Maybe not. But this is exactly where I feel like I need to be in the time being. That's awesome. And, and again, really good points. Try to find businesses that, that are doing what you want to do, uh, tackling the challenges that you want to tackle, whether that's, I, I happen to have another role model from Sequence Bio who did a technology program at CNA, so you might meet her later on, but 
maybe next month because we're doing digital technology next month. Um, but but that same idea, if sequence bio happen to be the challenge that you wanna you wanna take on in your career, that doesn't limit you to to biochem um, or epidemiology. You might you might be uh, the person running their computers and, and and helping that way instead, and you're still tackling that challenge. Ah, so next up, I'm going to take a wild guess and say the answer is going to be no to this, but did either of you take any high school science classes? Oh, Tiffany did from uh, Center for Distance Learning and Innovation. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> So uh, I guess for Kim um, and Trina, have you taken any CDLI courses? Okay, so you sit in a room with a bunch of computers with like your friends who are also taking the class. This is like specifically rural Newfoundland. And a teacher talks to you, basically it's like COVID times before COVID existed, like virtual learning, but you were physically at the school. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I did. I took chemistry and French and math um uh i think it's in grade 11 and grade 12 um on cdli and there there was definitely some challenges there to, to pay attention and not talk to my friends <laughs> it, is there anything like in particular that like that they'd um like to talk about or like me to elaborate on um i, don't I know that if anyone, if uh, that attendee still wants to ask, they can they can share. But I guess if you generally have any tips and tricks for how to succeed through CDLI, yeah, um, I think like the 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 biggest thing for me was to um, was to set goals for myself. So make sure that I I kept on top of like I always read the textbook. Um, because in class when it's online, and I'm sure you all experience this now. Um, and um, yeah, so reading the textbook really, really helped me to catch some topics that I might have missed or overlooked in class and in my notes, and I was able to really fully understand it better. Um, and yeah, I know that specifically, like you're not discriminated against or you're not at a disadvantage for taking CDLI courses um, in high school. Um, so that that's really good. And, and if anything, it, it teaches you to be more independent, um, which I really, really liked about it. Um, but yeah, definitely um, trying to stay organized is really, really important for online courses. I imagine it would put you at an advantage going into Memorial. I think most everyone eventually does some distance courses. And right now, of course, distance is the um, norm. So so getting uh, some CDL, CDLI courses under your belt would, would potentially help you out there. And someone else is just asking what CDLI is. So it is Center for Distance Learning and Innovation. And it seems um, that you take courses online, and this was before before COVID, you could do courses that weren't necessarily offered at your high school. And just quickly looking at the website, which is cdli.ca, there seems to be uh, like a Memorial University recruitment presentation. I'm guessing this is mainly for high school students, is it? We have junior high and high school, so I guess the, the junior high Students might not have known it, and I didn't know about it before. Um, but something to keep in mind as you head towards high school that that you might be doing some some distance learning uh, even after we get our vaccines. Uh, next up, uh, are there any courses that you wish you took? that you didn't actually get to take either in, in high school or in your uh, university careers. Shall we start with Kim this time? Sure, yeah, I, I did not take a biomechanics course, uh, which I really would have loved to have taken um, because it didn't really fit in with the core courses that I had for the track that I was on. However, um, 
I'm a martial artist and also a dancer. So I have a, a real interest in how the body works when it's trying to do the moves that I'm doing. So I wish I had taken that course and actually I'm going to take a course. I'm going to sign up for an online course because it's never too late to take a new course. <laughs> Okay, Tiffany is back. So courses, Tiffany, that you wish you took that you didn't get to take? Um, I don't know if I, so like by the time, if you choose to do a degree program, um, I've taken a lot of courses that I didn't want to take and I've taken a lot of courses that I wanted to take. Um, and the best thing that I, I really like about the de degree programs is that you have electives so and you can minor in certain things that aren't really related to your degree program um, but you can do a certain amount of courses and then it'll be like awarded on your degree saying that you have a minor in something uh, not related or it could be related um, so yeah i did a lot of sociology courses i think sociology is really um, intriguing so I wish I could take more sociology there's one specific course about like how technology impacts like the way that society views like I guess influencers and and how like different platforms like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram makes people like value different things and have different morals and it was it was really really interesting but like you'll be able to dive into whatever interests you um, at, at that time. It's always good to, to take in a variety of courses and, and find out what you like. Um, for myself, I went into university and I had no idea what I was doing um, and just kind of took some random courses and, and had a lot of fun and figured it out along the way. So that's really what STEM for Girls Club in general is all about, just introducing you to all of the possibilities that there are. And hopefully we can give you that head start where where you know a little more than I did going into university, but but don't feel like you need to figure it out uh, too much ahead of time. Just just equip yourself with the best skills that you can along the way. Ah, so did you do any volunteer work in high school or university and did it help with your career? Um, believe Tiffany is the first to go this time. I am an avid volunteer. Um, I probably spread myself too thin. So if you're going to volunteer, make sure that it's something that you can do and commit time to. Um, so I did volunteer in high school um, and it was really impactful. I worked with the Autism Society and, and helped them put off their annual walks that no longer exist, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I also volunteered with the Breast Cancer Society in high school in uh, now when you get to university and you're doing your undergraduate degree there will be a lot of societies like student societies that are completely ran by students so I, I volunteer with a couple of different student societies um, and of course uh, yeah like there will be more opportunities to do so I think it's more like especially if you're thinking about um, using it for your career it's probably better to you know reach out to them now but like focus more on volunteering when you're when you're doing your undergrad or you're doing your um, post high school program and kim volunteer work from high school or university or now i know that you still do of course I do, yes. Uh, not in high school so much because I came from a super, super duper small community and we didn't have a lot of opportunities for um, volunteer work. But uh, in university, I did volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. It, I guess you could say indirectly, it helped my career because it, um, I was quite shy not very outgoing. And I think uh, doing volunteer work like that kind of uh, brought me out of my shell and allowed me to, you know, broaden my horizon. So, you know, your volunteer work that you do doesn't have to be science related. Like you don't have to volunteer at, you know, the Fluvarium or, or something like that to get an experience that's gonna serve you well in your career. It could be something completely unrelated. It's just the experience of, of 
working with you know people who are like-minded as you or and people who have completely different opinions than you do and just you know getting that whole experience is going to serve you well perfect and i've mentioned this before but we will have a uh, power skills uh, flip grid discussion board coming up it's not quite there yet but the, those will be more of your uh, quote unquote soft skills or employability skills uh, and those are things that you can very much get from from any volunteer experience which is kind of your communication type skills that uh, you'll need no matter what career you end up in inside or outside of stem and so that'll be coming up in the months ahead we don't want to overload you with everything right away. We're just trying to get you used to Flipgrid to start. <laughs> uh, one question here. Do you have any advice for people? Oh, I lost it. Do you have any advice for people interested in, in the medical field but aren't exactly uh, sure what specific courses to take? And I do want to preempt this with in two weeks time, we're going to do another role model panel with more life scientists. Uh, one of which is Madison Acker, who has a uh, master's of biology, which Kim also has, has that. And I know Tiffany, of course, is in epidemiology, uh, which is in the medical, medical field. Uh, but in two weeks time, we'll also have a, a doctor who works at St. Clair's. Uh, providing she doesn't get called in. And, and if she does, I, I'll uh, bug her for, for one of her colleagues' contacts. So I, I will have a doctor for you in two weeks' time. Uh, but uh, either of you wanted, want to tackle this, I'm, I'm guessing more so Tiffany, in advice for people interested in the medical field but aren't exactly sure what course to take. Mm -hmm. um, so most of my most of the people that I graduate my undergrad with are actually like in med school now. Um, so getting into med school is a, is something that a lot of people focus on, like before they actually get in. And then once they get in, it's like something that no one ever thinks about. Um, so for me personally, um, I would probably, it doesn't matter. Like if you do a music degree, you can still apply and get into medicine. I've had friends do that. And they say that they don't discriminate um, against whatever degree type that you have. Um, however, you do have to write the MCAT, which is like the medical, um, <laughs> it's like the, the test to, that gets submitted to the applicant or the med school that you wanna apply for. And um, there's some foundational sciences that you have to do. So things like physics, um, biology, biochemistry, chemistry, um, and psychology. So those are the main topics that are covered on the MCAT. And um, yeah, so like, especially in high school, I'd try to focus more on that because if you have a, a good foundation um, in university, you just study, like you don't pick up exactly where you left off from high school. They kind of expect you to have a good understanding of what's going on already. Um, so I guess like, yeah, trying to do really, really well in, in understanding, not so much the grades, but understanding the courses um, of the foundational sciences in high school. Perfect. Did you have anything to add to that, Kim? Um, I guess once you get into university and you start taking some of the core courses, uh, maybe if you're intending to go into medicine, you may, instead of focusing on, um, I don't know, ecology, you might want to look at uh, physiology, anatomy, those types of courses. Perfect. And I'll add a little bit to that as well, just because it came up during orientation. We talked about how doing um, advanced high school, advanced courses in high school can help with your university degree. Uh, I had a discussion with, with uh, another colleague of mine and we just wanted to, I guess, point out to you in terms of like going on for med school or getting into any, any very competitive program like that, it, is more important that you get there at your own pace um, with, with high grades 
um, than, than getting there as soon as possible. So while doing AP Chem or advanced math in high school will get you you know, those, those credit hours for university, if you're not maintaining um, the highest GPA that you can, then um, you're not going to actually gain from that advantage in, in the long run. And if you do bad in one course, like don't stress out about it. Like um, I have friends that, you know, did like 50s and 60s in their first, second year of university, like what med school specifically looks at and people and in the medical discipline, they want to see that you've made progress throughout your degree. Um, so as long as you finish strong and you finish with a good understanding and, and um, you know, you, like, you know what you're talking about, then I don't think that there'll be any issues, even if you aren't super successful and like, because adjusting to universities is not easy. Um, and yeah, not everyone excels in that. So don't be hard on yourself. Hey, I feel like two of these questions are a bit related. If you weren't doing your career, what other types of things would you be doing? And the other question is, what were some of your job possibilities having your the degree that you have other than the career that you currently do? So maybe if you did a completely different program, what would you have done? And had you done the same program, what other career possibilities uh, were out there for you? Uh, Kim? Okay, um, I think if I wasn't a biologist, I'd want to be a teacher. Actually, when I was doing my graduate work, um, in between doing experiments, I wasn't sure uh, when I was going to finish my graduate work. So I did apply to uh, the Faculty of Education to do an education degree, but never ended up doing it. So I think that's probably what I would have done if I hadn't become a biologist. The second part of the question, um, actually, I've been doing this for 25 years. And in those 25 years, I haven't remained in the same uh, career path that I'm in now. I've had many different jobs, uh, both related and unrelated to what I do now. Uh, for instance, I started off in a biotechnology company called AF Protein, where I was looking at antifreeze proteins in fish and how they could be used in medicine and used in food as a food additive to stop um, recrystallization in things like ice cream. Um, and so you know we sold proteins to Unilever, which is a really big company that that works with food additives. Um, yeah, and uh, then I did a complete like, turnaround and started doing uh, molecular biology, which is like, you know, completely different. You're going from proteins to, to genes now. And I was looking at um, transgenic fish. <laughs> so complete turnaround. Uh, then after I did that, I started working at Fisheries and Oceans Canada for a while where I was researching um, the molecular um, aspects of mussels. We were looking at... Uh, two different species of mussels in Newfoundland and how they hybridize. So I did that for a few years. Um, then I took a break and, and uh, started a family. And then I started working at, at Oceans Limited where I was doing the, um, the, the biomonitoring. So again, something completely different. So that just shows a, a really small example of what you can do with just a master's of biology. Master's of biology could be could be anything. You could you could do so many different things, and I have done so many different things. So yeah, that's it's a big big biological world out there. If you want to do biology, you can do just about anything. Like you know, they're even doing space biology now. You know, <laughs> if you want to, you can go to NASA with a biology degree and, and study. You know biology in outer space. That sounds so neat. <laughs> and you, Tiffany? Um, if I didn't do the, the, the biochemistry degree, so like one thing that I struggled with and I saw this in the questions was like, if like what job opportunities would you have with a biochem degree? Um, like one of the things that I really struggled with was like, okay, once I graduated, from um, my undergrad, I was like, okay, well, now what? And my friends who did nursing, they were like, 
coming out, making like really great money. They got jobs, like nursing jobs were like hotcakes. Like, um, and, uh, yeah. So like reflecting, like you still get the foundational biology, if anything, it like, it relates more to like science, um, in like a medical perspective, um, in nursing. And, uh, yeah. So if I didn't do a biochem degree and pursue like hard science, I think I'd, I'd definitely be a nurse. Um, and, and you can do like nurse practicing as well. Um, so that'd be like another, you could do a master's in that. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see, uh, upvoted we have, did you have any role models growing up? Let's see, maybe Kim first? Sure. Um Actually, I had a lot of teachers that I considered role models um, because, you know, I came from a very small community. We had less than 200 people. And um, I was one of the first people to actually go to university and then go on and do a graduate degree. Um, so I had a lot of people who were behind me pushing me to, to do that because, you know, it, it was kind of unheard of at the time that, you know, someone from my community would go on and do this. But um, on a broader scale, I guess, um, one of my role models was David Attenborough, <laughs> because, uh, you know, the way he presented science was, was so fun and so exciting that, you know, you couldn't help but, but want to do what he does. <laughs> Tiffany, your role models? Yeah, I didn't... Uh... I wish I had role models growing up. I didn't. That was one thing that I really struggled with. Like I was the first person in my family to get a degree. Um, so I never, you know, and like, I guess growing up in, in early 2000s, like, you know, your role model might be like Britney Spears or like some, some other like pop icon. But um, no, I, I wasn't really exposed to, sorry, my dog's chewing on his toy, um, but I wasn't really exposed to the types of opportunities that are available today. And I think that was really where I struggled. So I lacked guidance in, you know, what courses I took. I had to like reach out to um, a, uh, a counselor at MON who like helped me pick the courses that I needed to take to do what I wanted to do. And I, I really, um, I think I fell short and like all my other friends knew what they were doing. Like they were from St. John's. They had like, they wanted to do pharmacy and these are all the courses that they needed to do. So like I had to reach out to those friends and be like, if I want to do this, like, what do I do? You know? So I definitely like, there was no, I guess like the pop culture kind of got in the way. Um, and I don't know if, uh, if anyone here feels that way as well, but I feel like you feel pressured to conform and like talking about science and like being passionate about science isn't really something that is talked about or was it when I was growing up? Good points. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you're just pulled in so many directions all the time. Uh, once you do get into a, a department at Mundo, there is always a undergrad supervisor assigned to the whole department that you can go talk to to make sure that you're completing your requirements and, and the such like that uh, and there's when you when you seek it at MUN there is answers but you do have to be a bit proactive in finding the people to talk to but they are out there and uh, by all means you can always contact us at WRDC after after this program after you graduate as well uh, and we'll do our best as to help you succeed um let's see we had and, and we are getting down to the last kind of like 10 15 minutes so make sure you're upvoting questions if there's anything there that you really want to hear from these ladies today uh, you can always go back they both introduce themselves on the introductions grid on Flipgrid so you can reply to their their videos with a video of your own or just a simple text comment and ask more questions of them there um, and I'll flag them to let them know that you've done that uh, if you do. So to get a job should you do anything else besides 
getting your undergrad and masters. There's so many things. I don't I don't know if I, I want to throw you this question, but anything coming to mind? Uh, uh, perhaps Tiffany first for anything else you should do to find a job. Volunteer experience is key because it puts you in um, situations that you have to adapt to and like you learn a lot about yourself, like Kim and Trina were saying earlier. Um, so I, a lot of my colleagues that found jobs right at like, you don't even have to do a master's. It depends on what program you want to do. Um, but being very proactive and being con like persistent and, you know, making sure that you build up a resume and that your resume is really well um, defined and it's professional and maybe getting like, you know, online templates and stuff and, and working on it and constantly adding to it, you know, adding certificates and stuff like that really helped me. Um, yeah, it's definitely a personality. Like you, you definitely need to be proactive and you definitely like if you you want to got to fight for those jobs. <laughs> Anything to add there, Kim? Uh, if your program has a co-op uh, aspect to it, then do that because they're going to get you into the companies that you could possibly in the future be employed with. So if, if you have the opportunity to, to do a co-op co program, do that. The other thing is try and do some um, courses for communication type thing. So uh, I know at Memorial University, they have a Toastmasters group, which is fantastic. When I was there, I was in it. Um, just to get you used to public speaking, because I have been sitting in on a lot of interviews over my over my career. I've had to interview people, and and you know it's really important to have good communication skills if you're gonna if you're gonna fight for a job. Because as Tiffany said, it there's a lot of people fighting for that one job, and it could just come down to you know you could have the same degree as somebody else, you could have the same experience as somebody else, but if you can't get through that interview and answer your questions clearly and come across as someone who's professional and knowledgeable, then chances are the other person's going to get it. That is a uh, good, fun question. Um, maybe I'll even put it, I saw another fun question there too. Uh, the favorite part of your jobs and the other fun question I wanted to get in there, because I just want to know your favorite or most fun elective courses that you've taken. Favorite part of the job and then favorite part, I guess, of, of undergrad or maybe master's elective courses. Uh, Kim first. Okay, the favorite part of my job is working in the lab. I'm a real lab rat. I like doing experiments. I can't wait to see the results of my experience because who knows, I might discover something new. Um, my favorite elective, in undergraduate, I did a developmental psychology course, which was all about how you know, children develop and how their thoughts change and they grow as they grow. And I thought that was just fascinating. And my favorite elective in my master's program was an animal behavior course with Bill Montefecchi, who is super. If you ever get to take a course from him, do it. The favorite part of, well, my favorite part of my job is, I think it's being like part of really impactful research. Like, again, when you get the results, you're super excited and like, you know, when you're a doctor, you like you can, you know, you treat and diagnose people like probably 10 to 15 people a day, maybe 30. I don't know. Um, but as an epidemiologist and someone who's doing research for the province, like your results can impact hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so you have more of an impact, more of an outreach. Um, and my favorite elective uh, was, again, probably the uh, sociology course. It was a I think it was a second year sociology course about the sociology and technology and the prof ended up being like we developed a friendship afterwards it was that intriguing and uh yeah i, I loved it i it was super uh super intriguing and two kind of tangible questions here which i might uh 
need to find out a little more on myself and I can post answers to Flipgrid, uh, but do you get to pick a minor or do electives with every degree? And how much does it cost to take a couple minors? At least when I went through Memorial, you could only have one minor you could do. And um, every experience I've had, you've always been able to do electives. There is some requirements around your electives, of course, that you know you need two electives that are fourth year courses or something like that. Um, but, and then in terms of cost, I, that's a very tangible question that I'm not sure we'll be able to answer here for you today. <laughs> but uh, either of you wanna weigh in on your experience there? They're very tangible questions of- You can do a double uh, major. Like you don't, you can do a double major. Um, I've never heard of anyone doing a double minor. Um, you do a pick a major and like based on how intense you want to be about your degree, you can do a double major. So major in like, I've seen people at major in like political science and um, economics or like biology is their main major. And then their minor would be biochemistry. Um, and it costs the same. You don't like it, like you still have to do a set number of courses um, in order to graduate. So uh, each a uh, minor has their own, but I think it's like you have to like take a certain amount of courses in those things. And then they have like a list of the courses that you have to take to, to get a minor. And if you want to major in it, all of the, and you're doing a double major, all of the electives that you normally would have just taken as random courses are now as like a, like a, they're, they're dedicated to one topic and that's going to be your double major. Uh, when I went through through Memorial, I had the credits to have two minors, but they just didn't recognize that. So I, on paper, have one minor while I have the courses done for two minors. So, but but yeah, totally double major um, is is definitely a thing. And then in terms of electives, there's always uh, some wiggle room, like you might need to do. Uh, I don't know, an economics course, but there's like three different economics courses that you can pick from. So there's that kind of elective too, that that you're picking out of a very specific pool of electives. And then there's um, very broad open, do an elective in, in any department you choose elective. Uh, so there's a lot of variations and it's hard to answer the question uh, for all of the possible degrees MUN offers, we only have our own experiences, of course. Um, one of the questions that just popped up is, do you need a lot of math for your careers? Do you use math every, every day, every week? <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, we, when you're uh, making up solutions, of course, you have to calculate exactly how much of each ingredient you're going to need uh, for your solution. So that's just basic math. But when you get a large data set, you're going to have to analyze that data so that it makes sense. Um, so you can come to a conclusion about, you know, what does this data mean as far as this, this organism? It's a bunch of numbers, but what does it mean? So you have to do a lot of statistics on that. So that's, you know, another type of math that I use on practically a daily basis. I, uh, I'm definitely lucky I don't have to, like my, like the epidemiology, like statistical software that we use, like I, I don't use math every day, but sometimes I do need it. But the software that I use, it, I just have to like tell the software what I want it to do. And then it's like, boop, 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 boop. And then it does it. So I'm like, okay, like I, I definitely don't hand calculate or use like a, a graphing calculator or anything to, to do my work, thankfully. Amazing. I'm sure there's a learning curve with that technology as well. It's not, you know, <laughs> the simplest thing, but but we can learn anything, especially if it makes our lives in the long run a little bit easier. Um, circling back, uh, someone had asked early on about uh, courses for biomedical engineering. We will be having a, an engineering month, and I'm sure I have a uh, role model who did biomedical engineering for that. 
um, as neither neither of these ladies did biomedical engineering. I don't know. So we'll we'll circle back to that, and hopefully, uh, I might even be able to to get her on Flipgrid before Engineering Month comes up, and then. Uh, some on um, CDLI, someone's just asking, could anyone do CDLI courses at any time? I'm not familiar with it. Do you have a knowledge about that, Tiffany? Like at any time, like in, and I guess they don't, it doesn't specify, but like it's not like a take home and like the courses or the lectures are recorded or anything. Um, it's like you have a designated time that you have to log on and um and be in the class and the present in the class um and in order in order to get access to it i don't know if that's changed i graduated in 2014 so i'm i'm hoping things have been updated since then um but yeah and only people who like are in rural newfoundland where um those courses they don't have enough people to run those specific courses then they'll be ran through cdli uh, so you can't pick and choose what what ones you want to do online Okay, I'm going to definitely look into that a little more because I've never heard of uh, such things before. Uh, and I am seeing on their website, they seem to have some. Oh, look at that. Someone was asking about med school under their CDLI news and announcements is, are you interested in medical school? So obviously, uh, CDLI.ca is a good resource to be looking at for just all things um, related to, to high school and beyond. They, it looks like it might be updated a bit since, since maybe you went through it, Tiffany, with especially this past year, everyone is learning online. Uh, but with that, uh, we've reached the end of our questions, I believe, which is amazing. We got through a good 20 questions today, which is way more than I expected, but if anyone still has questions for these ladies, like I said, you can find them on Flipgrid and you can also, if you have questions for me, more, more about the program um, and what's coming up next, or if you're having any difficulties logging into Flipgrid, you can email me at stem girls at wrdc.ca, or you can text 709-300 uh, 1214 and uh, hopefully we'll sort out those issues for you. Don't forget to be looking at the bulletin, uh, the newly created bulletin on Flipgrid. I'm going to try to update that every Friday with any events that are coming up. I'll po post up events that are outside of the club as well. If, if our partner organizations are running any programs that you might be interested in, I'll also post that to Flipgrid. It's not all about what we're offering. We just want to Make sure you have all the knowledge uh, that you possibly can at this point. And, uh, and like I said, in two weeks time, uh, we're going to try to do these sessions every second Wednesday at four o'clock. And I have a, uh, I have two ladies lined up, uh, Madison Acker with her Masters of Biology. She's running your maple tapping sessions this month. She should have videos up soon about that. And you're getting your maple tapping file in the mail, hopefully this week. Um, and and then a childhood friend of mine who became a doctor, she's working at St. Clair's, uh, that's Dana Butler, uh, providing that she doesn't get a call to, uh, to go into clinic, uh, she's hoping to attend as well, uh, so four o'clock on, that is March 24th, two Wednesdays from now. Uh, and with that, I will let everyone uh, go for the rest of their day, enjoy. Uh, this beautiful sun, or at least it's sunny here on the Avalon. So signing up everyone. Thanks so much again. Thank you. And just quickly, someone asked. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, one of the girls just asked if you'll be deleting anything off Flipgrid and will the topics change every month? Things won't be deleted off Flipgrid. We're just going to continue adding to it. Um, so the life sciences grid, for example, has four or five topics right now. We might add to that, but we'll certainly next month, you'll see a whole new grid come up called digital technology, and there'll be new topics on that. So you don't have to necessarily do every life science activity right now. Um, 
but if you want to, they're there. So no, nothing is getting deleted off of Flipgrid. Wonderful, have a great day, bye.